Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I guess it's time for me to talk also about a Zabbix Cloud like here in the YouTube. And uh, if you don't know what a Zabbix Cloud is, then probably you have not opened your internet for quite some time because last Tuesday, which was October 1, uh, Zabbix released its new product, which is the Zabbix Cloud. And since then, like if you would go to the Zabbix.com, you will see a lot of information like what a Zebix cloud is, um, additional information like five regions, seven tiers, optimal performance, 24 seven uptime. Also, uh, there was a summit, right? You know, the summit 2024. And I also had a speech about uh, Zabbix uh, cloud. So uh, you can go download the presentation and I'm sure also watch the presentation itself uh, in the YouTube. I'll try to throw in some, <clears throat> some links in the description. But for this video, I just wanted to briefly also explain like what exactly Zabbix Cloud is, what you can expect out of it, and why you could be interested in actually starting to to use it. And uh, long story short, Zabbix Cloud is basically the SaaS platform for the same good, good old Zabbix that we know, right? Uh, with the only difference is like, Whenever we're talking about the Zabbix in a way, if you decide like to download it uh, with the packages and install it on your virtual machine or physical server or something like that, the stuff that we're already like used to do, right? You're also responsible to take care of all of the maintenance, updates, upgrades, security, patching, tuning, uh, configuration files of the database, configuration files of the Zabbix. So, a lot of this manual work, which takes a lot of time and resources, but with a Zabbix Cloud as a SaaS platform, like all of that is included already in the pricing of the cloud itself. So talking also about the pricing, I will touch it in a couple of minutes, but what you need to do if you want to get started, and by the way, you can get started for free because like at least right now, the Zabbix Cloud offers also a five day free trial. So you can sign up, um, create your user, get accepted eventually and play around with a Zabbix Cloud like for five days with a full functionality that is available right now. No limitations. After that, if you do decide like to continue using the cloud, you can upgrade to the paid version. And uh, if not, then that's fine. Then, then you just stop using Zabbix in the cloud and probably continue to do that with your uh, on-prem installation. But like if you decide that, okay, this is something I want to try um, from Zabbix.com, you can go like here, try Zabbix Cloud or just open the web page cloud.zabbix.com and this is the login form which you will see like if you are interested about the um, terms of service and privacy policy like where exactly your data will be stored um, what kind of conditions do you need to keep in mind then you're probably interested like in these three documents in the bottom right uh, side terms of the service privacy policy and well security policy might also be interesting for you to watch when you are all set the only thing that you need to do is like click here don't have an account sign up and uh, the registration is like super simple you just need to provide your email address it must be a valid one now uh, you need to enter the password and there's also like some small security policy, a uh, password policy to make sure that you don't enter something like admin 123 and uh, try to guess captcha. Like if it uh, doesn't go well, you'll be also able to like refresh it and get a new one, right? So agree to the terms, sign up. After you click the big blue sign up button, you will receive an email saying that, okay, uh, thank you for the registration, but due to early access and the Zabbix Cloud right now is released in the mode of the early access uh, and the message will state that hey you know by the way uh, you'll have to wait a little bit uh, until we actually accept you and once your user user account or whatever is validated you will receive another email saying that okay uh, you're accepted to use the Zabbix cloud and I will be straightforward like this process is fairly quick um, very very likely 99% that you will be accepted in the same day uh, when you sign up and even possible that it's going to happen in a couple of hours so when that's done um, obviously you can go back to the Zabbix.cloud and uh, log in and after you log in the place that you will find is going to be 
this one. So this is how the Zabbix Cloud looks right now. And as you can see on the left side, there are just a couple of navigation menus that you actually can and need to play around. And probably the most interesting one is this, like nodes where you get to create a new nodes. And uh, here, what is actually required to create them it's super simple. There's just a couple of parameters. First of all, you need to enter the node name or you can just use the automatically generated one. And it's also going to be used to access your front end. So whenever the node is created, like uh, we can check these ones, right? So War Moon and, and main part uh, here is the URL to the front end, which is also contains from the node name. And this is URL for me to actually open um, the Zabbix frontend, which is in the cloud. Uh, so when I'm creating, I can choose that. Um, I can also choose the region uh, where exactly my node is going to be created. And uh, Zabbix cloud works on top of AWS. And that's also disclosed in the terms of service for privacy policy. I don't really remember. And uh, right now you're able to choose between five regions. And those five, five regions are Europe, Frankfurt, Europe, Ireland, um, Singapore, Sao Paulo and uh, North Virginia in the United States. So those are five regions more to come in the future. Like um, that's already clear that there's going to be more region after some time. And if there are some specific region that you are really uh, missing for some reason, or perhaps you think that the current choice is not a good one, then just let me know in the comments, like uh, what is missing, why? And, and yeah, just, just give your answers. Then it's a matter to decide uh, what compute tier you want to run, right? And we're talking about nano, micro, small, medium, large, X large, 2X large. And Zabbix Cloud right now offers seven tiers where like it's suitable for small installations and also super large installations. Like if we talk about a nano, we're talking about the 50 values per second and 50 values per second. It also has included 10 gigabytes of the storage. And if you are a VAT payer, it's going to be 1050 on top. So 60 uh, dollars in total. But if you're not a VAT, payer then it's going to be $50 which will allow you to monitor 50 new values per second and it, it sounds small but it doesn't have to be it actually pretty much and it strictly depends on uh, update interval of your items so no matter like you see it says that it's good for like 5000 metrics if the update interval of each item each metric is like one minute it will be sufficient and by metric it's meant like uh, let's say cpu load or memory utilization or the network traffic or something else so each of those uh, metrics right uh, is is one item in terms of the zabbix and when you divide the number of metrics with the average um update interval how frequently you want to receive new values you will actually get uh, the most important metric which is the values per second so nvps and nano tier is good for 50 nvps like if you want to go um, as high as possible then right now uh, the highest tier is 2x large which is suitable to support 10,000 uh, new values per second which is good for I think it's a million uh, metrics, right? And it's recommended to have also 500 gigabytes of the storage. So pricing, you can see uh, 2X large is 5,000 uh, per month. X large is 2.5 thousand. Large is 1.87. Uh, medium is 750, small is 250, micro is 100, and nano is uh, $50. Disk size is something you get to play around, right? Like if let's say you choose a medium which supports 1000 values per second and uh, it is stated that the recommended storage size is 200 gigs for this compute, but you're not obligated to choose this. Like maybe you understand it, okay, you want to keep the history for some five years or, or something like that, so you can always bump that up. Or perhaps you understand that, uh, okay, I'm not so much interested in storing the history, I just want to process everything with the triggers so you can go with like 25 gigs and obviously from these choices also the price is uh, changing 
Then you click create a node and after 10 minutes you will have your node ready and when it's ready it looks like that. Um, in the node configuration what you might be looking for is like the front end URL, right? If you want to access your uh, your Zabbix installation then you just click here. Um, username by default same as in the local installation it is admin and uh, let's say if you're looking for the password to the front end it's not going to be the default Zabbix one for the security measures of course. So so you just click here on a password and copy initial password is going to be in your clipboard. Then you can log into your Zabbix front end. Server uh, host name, DNS name, right? Main part, Zabbix Cloud, uh, same Zabbix server port. And if you are worried about like how will you set up uh, firewalls or, or stuff like that, each Zabbix Cloud node also comes with a static IP address. So behind this main part, Zabbix.cloud, there's going to be the static IP address. So you can either just ping it or resolve it. And IP that you're going to see is going to be like the one which you're going to stick with this node forever. Uh, you can also see configuration like compute, nano, storage, 10 gigabytes, region where it's deployed and what's the version of the Zabbix right now, current disk utilization. Uh, you can see how much and when you will be required to pay in the future. And you can always cancel the subscription. And as far as it goes about a payment, uh, the beautiful part about it is also that it's super transparent, like no matter how you use your Zabbix node, like if you created this Nano, which cost a $50, even if you monitor like 10 servers, 50 servers, 500 servers, 5,000 servers, maybe you have 10 users working in a Zabbix front end, the price is still going to be the same because your only limitation is NVPS, right? For the Nano, it's 50. You will not be able to go above that. Other than that, you can do whatever you want with your node. And here you can find like access filters if you want to set up the firewall rules for your Zabbix uh, node installation itself, right? Maybe you want to limit access to API, uh, maybe to the front end or, or to the server. Um, you can also set up encryption certificate based between the components of the Zabbix. Uh, if you see and understand it, okay, I have outgrown my initial choice of the compute tier and right now I want to go from the nano to let's say medium to have 1000 values and perhaps I also want to increase the disk size you can do that anytime you can do that for unlimited amount of the times even within the single days right so as long as you see like okay i need to scale then you just go to your node click on the upgrade tab do the upgrade and you're done if eventually you see that okay i don't need so much on vps anymore you can again come back to the upgrade tab and let's say downgrade downgrade to the micro or something like that uh, backups there is an automated system backup which is uh, free of the charge well charge for that is already included like in the price of your monthly uh in a monthly price of your node and that is happening like uh, weekly every seven days and if something happens here is the restore button you can always restore from the backup if you want to create additional backups yourself you can do that big blue button create backup one will cost three dollars 63 cents including the VAT um, and and this price is determined by the storage size that you have so with 10 gigs it's going to be three dollars if you're going to have like 300 gigs storage then obviously it's going to be more expensive history that's the tab where you specify for how long you want to keep uh, the history data right and also the audit log data in your Zabbix front end and the maintenance is a period for which you will actually allow the uh, Zabbix Cloud team to do the maintenance on your node in, in a Zabbix Cloud and whatsoever. So this is the time period well, you, when you do understand that something, some maintenance might happen during this period. And again, like in a nutshell, the beauty of the Zabbix in the cloud is that Zabbix take, takes care of everything. You don't need SSH access to your server. In fact, you don't even have it because Zabbix is responsible to upgrade your nodes, do the minor version upgrades, major version upgrades, tune your database, tune your Zabbix server config file, upgrade the database, uh, even like change database engine if the time comes and, and such move is required. Do all the security fixes. Like if in a Sunday evening you find out that there was some vulnerability which actually affects your Zabbix server instead of you jumping out of the bed or whatever and rushing to upgrade your servers it's going to be the Zabbix responsibility.
And the only thing that you get to do is like you have your front end where you set up your items, create templates, create hosts. So it's it's same Zabbix, right, as you're used to. So you can add some proxies, you can add some agents and just enjoy the monitoring, pay as you go, scale as you go, worry free like uh, faq there is also uh, in faq by the way you will find like a lot of answers to probably uh, questions that you might be interested to uh, support is uh, also available in the support it's like platform support it's not a product support so you won't be able to ask questions like how can i create a trigger in a zabbix but if something doesn't work here um, let's say you're not able to create a new node for some reason, uh, right? Then you just go to the support and it will essentially going to be fixed uh, in, in a very timely fashion. So that's about it for a quick introduction. I didn't want to go like super long. We're already like 15 minutes in this video. So if you want to know a bit more about some of the functionalities or if you're curious about like what's the advantage and disadvantage from the cloud and on-premise installation just ask me in a question in the comments right there's no questions and uh yeah i'll gladly answer those uh, we'll see whether in the comment or with just another video so for now thank you guys for watching see you later don't forget to subscribe and, and click the like button and goodbye